Hey guys, welcome back to Squatch Bar. Uh, this is a cricket video, and we are going to discuss about England and Ireland uh, one day series, uh, the three match one day series, which England defeated Ireland by uh, two games to one, and uh, surprisingly, Ireland defeated England in the third game. And uh, yeah, we'll talk about the series. We'll talk about the first game, which England uh, comfortably won. They only had to score a small total of 174. So. Uh, not much of a problem for england but in the second odi uh, we could see that ireland showed some resistance ireland offered some con- uh, competition for the english team and uh, even though england won the game by six wickets uh, the four quick wickets or, or rather four wickets early in the mm-hmm. innings uh, that that could uh, that could have meant that ireland could have came but uh, all thanks to sam billings uh, david willey and thanks to 82 runs by bear stoke quick 82 which helped england uh, remain in the game and actually go on and win the game so that's what happened in the first series what do you think of the first two series uh i think so the in the first game also if, if you talk it was not a comfortable victory because uh, england were reduced to 90 for four and after that you know sam bellings you know just stay, stayed on the crease uh, he just played his shot and on morgan also he was uh, relatively supporting and again if we look at that way you know target was simple 174 and 90 for four if you're 94 for and taking 174 again that's not a big trouble but still Uh, they were still reduced to 94 for and again uh, the ireland you know uh, we have to give praise where it's due because ireland bowlers you know even they were uh, defending those 170 and 200 runs you know those uh, even below average score but still they were you know batting hard by fighting hard to gain you know and in the second test in the second odi again uh, they came very close what are the curry by uh, 137 for six strike time pe but after that again sam billings you know played his innings and he took david willy under his wing so again uh, mm-hmm. sam billings you know uh, he's turning one of the one of the you know good players is for if one of the one of the those players you know where he is he is acha khelta hai wo acha khelta hai player but you know the team is so good ki they, he doesn't get any chance to play so again uh, yeah, he's think, like michael lassie he is like michael lassie of 2002 and 3 you know he was a great prospect for australia but couldn't play for australia hmm. till 2005 because uh, australia already had those great players so i believe sam billings is again one of those players who does not uh, fit into the team because he is unfortunate not because mm-hmm. he has a problem or he is a bad player but because he is unfortunate so yeah that's what the problem for the billings uh, hopefully he'll get to play more in coming few years mm-hmm. but uh, he's already 28 years old and uh, we'll have to see what happens with sam billings in the future uh, again uh, we'll talk about the second mm-hmm. game where uh, like i said ireland showed resistance and, uh, like you said that deni padegi ireland ke bowlers ki mm-hmm. were defending low totals yet they were uh, bowling um, you know very nicely they very were bowling nice, tight yeah. line and lengths and uh, after reducing after being reduced to 130 for uh, six yeah. wickets england chased a total of 220 so uh, good job england and uh, in the third game mm-hmm. again uh, the momentum uh, changed in the series because ireland showed resistance in the second uh, second game and uh, that's where the momentum changed in favor of ireland they defeated england in the third odi mm-hmm. even after uh, england batting them out uh, for 320 runs 28. they did not ha uh, unhone like haar nahi mani and uh, they chased the total of 320 mm-hmm. we seen this happen back in 2011 where kevin o'brien scored 100 and uh, but this time not one but two players scored, uh, scored 100 andrew balbrin and paul sterling yes we'll talk about paul sterling as well mm-hmm. he is in the team since many years now he's and uh, he's only 29 years old so he's got a few years to play and uh, not seen the best of paul sterling paul sterling is going to get better and again also andrew balberin he's also 29 years old only and uh, he'll definitely get better uh, he's, he has he has an uh, he has an impressive average as well mm-hmm. even now uh, so uh, prospect for ireland uh, so yeah future looks bright uh, again uh, i want i want to point to one name uh, curtis camper uh, you know he played those two matches Correct. where ireland was batting first and ireland was reduced you know mm-hmm. come total to reduce kiya tha But you know, due to due to, to Curtis Camper, Ireland managed to reach 172 and 200, you know, 215 mm-hmm. for this forty second inning. So again, uh, it was all thanks to Curtis Camper, you know, for making uh, for those uh, two half centuries on his two matches. So again, is he a good uh, you know, prospect for England? What do you think? From South Africa, played in England, but Ireland, is a good prospect yeah, yeah, for Ireland? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could could happen, you know, just like Owen Magun who Oin played Morgan. for Ireland and then is captaining England, uh, and uh, yeah, Curtis Camper. uh might play for england but uh, let's not talk about that because hopefully he'll play for ireland and help ireland team uh, grow uh, that's what we hope because uh, that's what paul sterling and kevin o'brien did right mm-hmm. uh, 
they they were they were playing for Ireland for many years now, and they're still playing for Ireland. So if he does something like that, and uh, if there's no brain drain, mm-hmm. uh, that will be a great. He'll be a great prospect for Ireland because he was one of those players who showed resistance. And uh, mm-hmm. like we were talking about the third ODI, we'll talk about uh, Owen Morgan's 140 runs. Uh, that's what mm-hmm. he scored, right? 100. No, 101. Uh, Owen Morgan one scored 106 runs. Mm-hmm. 106 runs. He scored 106 and. Uh, it was a 500 for him as well. And uh, like we were talking about Andrew Balberin and uh, Paul Sterling, they did a great job and uh, Ireland was fantastic. Again, uh, I've seen Ireland you know, chasing 300 plus so it was not a surprise for me, you know, because uh, again, we saw in 2011. And again, in 2015, you know, we saw that against uh, uh, West Indies, I think, so it was West Indies. So again, uh, I've seen Ireland for chasing 300 plus so I think so. Chasing is not a problem for Ireland, but the problem is in the batting first, you know, setting the target because uh, again, mm-hmm. uh, they don't know, you know, how to build the innings. They should uh, learn from the, uh, they should learn, you know, they should uh, uh, try, you know, to build some innings, you know, just because uh, if you have a target mm-hmm. in mind, you know, you you know what to do and you according to, you do according to that. But you know, when you are batting first, it's always difficult to bat first, even though you know, people say, you know, uh, in a toss, bat first, uh, put some runs on the board. But again, it's not easy. I, mean, I think it, it is not as easy, you know, batting first because you, uh, you have to access, uh, assess the situation. You have to see what the pitch is doing, what the outfield is, and according to that, according to that, you know, you have to set the target. You have to set a total in your mind. And you know, if you, if, because uh, it's an innings cricket innings, anything can happen. So again, uh, you have to you know vary your score, vary your target. You know, which, what you had in mind, so up and down depending on the match situation. So again, uh, I think so. Ireland should uh, learn, you know, how, learn the trick, you know, how to bat first, how to set a target. Because again, in the World Cup, you know, because World Cup is the place, you know, where I get to see Ireland, uh, teams like Ireland and all. Again, in the World Cup, you know, batting second, they do well uh, when, when compared to batting first. Again, what do you think of that, you know, if we look at that way? See, uh, you know, batting first is equally difficult as batting second. Uh, people say that batting first is easy because you just have to set a target. But uh, but the thing is, you know, before you go on to bat, uh, you just look at the pitch and you're like, yeah, we'll easily score 300 mm-hmm. here. And uh, you play 10 overs and uh, suddenly 240 is par score. So mm-hmm. that happens when you're batting first. You have to assess the pitch. You have uh, nothing. Uh, you have no target in front of you. You have to set your target and you mm-hmm. have to score runs. And if you do not score runs, you're still in the game. But uh, but, but that that is a different kind of nervousness because uh, in your mind, you know, you, you were 10 mm-hmm. or 20 runs behind. So that can haunt you while bowling in the second innings. Uh, you know, you, you remember the game, right? Mm-hmm. Australia scored 430 and uh, South Africa chased 430. Yes, 434. So, exactly. Uh, even though that was a batting pitch, after the first innings when uh, South Africa uh, were going on to bat in the second innings, Jack Kellis, uh, Jack Kellis joked that uh, the Australians are 10 or 20 runs behind. So, mm-hmm. that suddenly uh, boosted the uh, South African confidence and they went on to chase. So when something uh, like that happens in the dressing room, you cannot uh, like any total, koi bhi total uh, chua, bada nahi hota. So, so that's what uh, that's what I guess Ireland must be mm-hmm. thinking after the first innings. They must they must be very confident, uh, confident, and uh, that helped them chase uh, those big totals number of times. Uh, I want to go on to a different topic. Uh, I saw Tom Bunting in the lineup. You know, he played all the three games. Uh, he scored a 50 in the third game, but still, uh, you know, Tom Banton, I heard a lot of his name uh, during his big bash career, you know, he was hitting the shots and uh, I Correct. heard Tom, Tom Banton is, is, uh, is a huge name, uh, he's a uh, huge T20 name uh, okay, and uh, we've not seen, uh, yeah, I was not uh, seen let him. down, you know, I was let down by him because he was uh, out cheaply on the first uh, first occasions, but again on the third occasion he scored a half century, but still, I was a little disappointed in exactly. him, I wanted uh, to see, see the more. thing is, Tom Banton is a, He's a Tom Banton is a huge T20 name. So, mm-hmm. and uh, since this was an ODI, we should not quickly judge him. Uh, as of now, he's only played a few games, uh, and uh, those few games sample is very less. Uh, we should let Tom Banton play a few more games. He's going to play in the IPL as well, mm-hmm. and uh, he might play for England in the T20 World Cup. So, uh, so Tom Bant- uh, we cannot rule Tom Bant- uh, Tom Banton out right now. Uh, he can do well, and uh, hopefully, he will do well. Uh, again, uh, you talked about you know Paul Sterling and Andrew Bancroft, and you know already 29 years old, and they can be a lot of asset to an mm-hmm. Ireland team. Uh, so you know, you know, ODI Super Series is coming. Uh, so again, Ireland will get to play against you know big boys like Australia, Pakistan, and uh, Sri Lanka, West Indies. So again, is that uh, you know uh, they can build on this? So again, uh, it's a it's a huge boost you know to win an ODI Series to one in uh, to one in England. 
so again what do you mean sync key means uh, is added on the right track because uh, because you know for previously added had to qualify for you know they had to play lots of qualifiers you know to qualify for world cup now if they do well in this odia super league uh, and only i think so there are eight series uh, and uh, four home series and four away series so again uh, it's a huge boost you know you play four home series against you know teams and maybe if you win five four out of four you know out of eight you know you win five and six series and you are in contention for world cup so again you know if you looking in that way uh, what do you think you know are ireland on a good track uh, what do you think ireland are yeah ireland are definitely on the good track see i've always believed afghanistan and ireland are the best associate teams and uh, that's what happened they uh, they got the test status before any other team mm. and uh, other than ireland and afghanistan i believe netherlands are the are one of the best associate mm. teams but we'll talk about those teams later mm. we'll talk about ireland like you said uh, for home series and for away series mm. and uh, ireland to definitely make use of this win at least home games and mm. uh, one or two games here and there just like they won here in england and if they can do that they they might definitely they might definitely be in the world cup so yeah we cannot rule ireland out because ireland are really doing well and mm. uh, yeah and i'll definitely i definitely believe that they'll play uh, team like sri lanka bangladesh uh, west yes, indies yeah. and uh, so they have a chance to win the series as well mm. so so taking these factors into consideration yes ireland is on the right track and uh, yeah the future for ireland looks bright so we'll come up, come to england now uh, england played a rotation side you know they did not had a uh, uh, players you know played in test series again they did not have bench stocks they did not had do root uh, no choice but that. so again uh so it was a, you know uh, some uh, it was a kind of audition for you know new players to come and uh, settle and make their name so who do you think has made a name for himself in this series i think so one i think uh, one example of uh, david willy who you know played very well uh, bowled very well took five wickets in the first innings and again he was uh, economical in uh, in the boat in the boat test match in the boat against odia series so again david willy has uh, you know showed uh, shown me that yeah he can play for england so other than him you know all including him who do you think uh, are players you know who had uh, shown you that they can play for england see david willy has always been a, a huge name for the english team even though he is not been able to play so many games uh, he has been a huge name and uh, just like uh, sam billings like i said mm-hmm. sam billings is just unfortunate to be uh, to be playing in the same era as ben stokes jose butler mm-hmm. uh, bates to and uh, and these guys and morgan as well so uh, so so sam billings is a huge name well billy is a huge name like you said bob anton in, mm. in the odia team uh, might not be possible very soon but he'll definitely come because he's only 22 years old he's 21 or 22 years old mm. so uh, we so we might see tom banton in the england, england team after a few years if not now but uh, he's definitely made a name for himself in the t20 format for england so these are a few names that are going to do good job for england uh, in the future So and it's not like it was an entirely new team mm-hmm. uh, so many players who played for england earlier were still there in the team uh, and uh, we all know they were they had to play two games uh, one against ireland and the next day they had to play against pakistan so mm-hmm. not the so the first team was not available but uh, this team was as good as the first team because mm-hmm. they still had a few big teams Uh, so again you told you that they had to play a test match against uh, pakistan so we'll come up to that now uh, we will leave that uh, england uh, series right now for, for our side we'll come up to england pakistan series uh, again it's a uh, one test championship series uh, pakistan you know just played three test match they lost you know they, they drew one one to sri lanka so again they mm-hmm. lost one over there uh, so what do you think it's an important thing for pakistan you know to uh, to you know cement their container containership for top top two because you know when if we when we made our videos you know on this on the test championship we talked about uh, new zealand england australia and india we we had never men- we had not mentioned pakistan at all in the top two series so again if they win this uh, win this test you know if they win it 2-1 or even 3-0 uh, are they in a condition for top two what do you think about that uh, see i don't uh, i don't think pakistan might make it into top two because uh, they did not win so many test matches you know uh, pakistan if they want to uh, be in the top two they should have won uh, many matches Uh, before because that series loss like in australia mm. that cost them a lot and uh, i don't think pakistan will win this uh, series in england by three go- uh, three games to nil because mm. that is going to be very difficult and uh, this series for england is uh, very important as well because if england lose points here uh, that would hamper their chances to be mm. in the final of the world test championship 
and uh, that might also make this test championship uh, uncompetitive and boring so and one more thing uh, this is england's uh, last home series and after that they they flew to overseas one year one year india and other we don't know so again this is the last uh, last home series again mm-hmm. it's a huge opportunity huge chance yes yeah, so uh, england has Aust- already dropped points against australia they mm-hmm. dropped two uh, test matches and uh, and a test match was draw and a test match loss against west indies that should have been won uh, so england have had a uh, have had their share, share of blows in this world test championship and uh, they cannot afford any more uh, blows and uh, this is why they are playing their best players in the in the test series they are playing broad and dresen and uh, jofra archer in their uh, bowling lineup so england are not taking any their uh, any chances mm-hmm. they are playing their uh, best teams and uh, that is going to make things difficult for pakistan and uh, and uh, due to these things pakistan might not be able to qualify for the first two but uh, but hopefully if pakistan does well if pakistan mm. you know if they uh, go on to win two test matches instead of three mm. uh, that that might be a huge thing for pakistan as well because they have done well in the past test series mm. so okay now we have to talk we have talked about you know key players for england we all know who the key players for england are. i want to hear about pakistan you know because i think you know uh, uh, mohammed is one you know on that uh, swinging surface you know probably got 140 uh, 140 case mm-hmm. is going to be one of a key player you know mm-hmm. and uh, shahin shah afridi is also playing so again he's going to be a huge one uh, in batting you know i see uh, baba azam you know we have talked about baba azam shahin baba azam shahin baba azam uh, uh, just a young player so i will just for that for right now focus on baba azam you know because uh, we have Also talked about you know Baba Azam including mm-hmm. even a fast four with Virat Kohli and Steve Smith and Kane Williams. So again, uh, Baba Azam is going to be a key player. Uh, and we have you know uh, currently when we are filming this day two is going on right now. And I saw Baba Azam got out getting out on sixty nine, sixty seven, I think so. So again, uh, I think so. Baba Azam is going to be a huge key player. Uh, so other other than that, who do you think you know who are, who will be you know who will be instrumental instrumental for Pakistan? See, I'll talk about a few players. I'll talk about Babar Azam as well. And uh, mm-hmm. you know, Nasir Usher mentioned that if Babar Azam was Virat Kohli, a lot of people would be talking about him. But uh, since he's Babar Azam, not many mm-hmm. people are talking about him. And I, I really agree to what he said because Babar Azam is a great, great prospect, and uh, mm-hmm. he's going to make a huge name for himself uh, in the Pakistan team because he's been doing well consistently. He's been doing well since the 2017 series against. the west indies where he scored three centuries in three games so he's been consistent since then and, and uh, with lo- lot of consistency brings a lot of responsibility mm. and uh, that responsibility might motivate him to do well and uh, that's what he's doing and uh, since he's doing well he's a huge name for pakistan team and uh, he's one of the key players but also we saw him getting out uh, mm. you know the ball was bowled at it was an out swinger mm. at uh, fourth or fifth stump and uh, babar azam tried to drive so oh. Uh, so he got intimidated intimidated that's what i feel mm. because he's a great uh, driver of the ball he plays a great cover drive so th- so those balls should not intimidate him and uh, uh, that's where he got out uh, he was caught at uh, slips so. just one thing you know we all talked about you know baba azam getting caught on slip uh, just remember you know vat kohli in 2014 you know how many times he got caught yeah, uh, that get trip- caught. yeah i'm coming to that. i'm coming mm. to that exactly uh, that reminded me of virat kohli but mm. uh, babar azam is not virat kohli they are two very different uh, personalities and uh, babar azam has a chance to make a huge name for himself he's done well in this series he scored a 69 and uh, as far as shan masood is concerned he, uh, right now he was batting at 88 uh, i just checked the score mm. right now so he's a huge name as well because uh, he's not played much games and he's already doing well in england mm. and uh, 88 is not a small uh, small total uh, so yeah he's a huge name for pakistan team and uh, as far as bowling is concerned you mentioned the shahin shah afridi mm-hmm. yes he's only 21 years old uh, so a few years later we are going to see the best of shahin shah afridi so yeah these are the few players that are going to do well for pakistan in upcoming years um, i just saw you know one thing on pakistan either but they are two spinner they are chabaz uh, i don't think really what what is name and they have yashish shah Uh, two spinner in England against England. Uh, what do you think? Because yes. you know, we are subcontinent team. They are subcontinent team, and they heavily rely on spinners to take wickets. Because mm-hmm. against subcontinents, uh, we don't have that much spaces. And uh, in against you know, and in India, we have also seen. In there was a two, there was a you know time when uh, in the India had to rely on the spinners to take wickets. And fast bowlers, you know, they just to you know just to just fast bowlers. They were just so, uh, only fast bowling. Okay, again, uh, again uh, two spinners against England on that uh, attack. 
see uh, you can you sh- you can never rule spin out of the game because spin can uh, win you games on any track anywhere uh, and uh, since uh, yasir shah is a leg spinner and a leg spinner can turn the ball anywhere in the world mm. anywhere in beat a spin track beat a uh, or beat a cement flat track uh, a leg spinner can turn the ball anywhere so so a leg spinner is a universal spinner that's what i like to call leg spinners so uh, other than him uh, pakistan have another spinner so yeah playing two spinners in england is not a problem uh, yeah that should not be a problem england have uh, sorry pakistan have uh, their share of fast bowlers as well so yeah that would that would be fine uh, so uh, prediction because i predict ki uh, england will win this series 2-0 uh, or at least 2-1 uh, pakistan might get a back, test a back you know or get a draw or win so again i think i think ki england will win 2-0 because as we saw you know the first test match was just you know they were uh, maybe caught out of you know caught out of uh, no nowhere and you know they were not match fit match ready But again, in the second and third test match, we saw that bowling was on point. The batting was also playing well. So again, I think uh, yeah. England had had a lot of uh, exp- a lot of you know practice uh, in that West Indies series. And coming to this series, yeah. they are now well settled in the team. They have the you know uh, warmed up and all, if you can say. So I think uh, England might win this series too. Nil. What are your what are your predictions? Uh, see, England have momentum on their side, but. Uh... Pakistan also have momentum on their side. Uh, this time both the teams have momentum because Pakistan last time when they came here in 2016 I guess and mm. uh, they came back again but uh, in 2016 they drew the series they did really well. Mm. So uh, Pakistan team would remember what they did back then and they would try to replicate that. So yeah you cannot rule Pakistan out because Pakistan is the most unpredictable team of all mm. and uh, that unpredictability could even win them game or uh, or like you said a draw. and uh, right now pakistan is batting well so but england still remain favorites because not only mm. they are playing at home but also they have players like ben stokes and uh, all these players who are very much in form so mm. yeah england are favorites but you should not rule pakistan out so yeah that's uh, that's it we have for today we talked about ireland uh, we talked about you know england pakistan so if we had we had no we, are, we had, didn't have time to make separate videos because we are busy with our champions league schedule we want to make champions league video again So yeah, this was a matchup video, uh, two in one for you. So again, we will come up, you know, after the first test match, first test match, we will come up with another video talking about, you know, in depth with England and Pakistan. So that's it for okay. us today. Uh, we will bring our part two of our uh, podcast, you know, tomorrow. Uh, this yeah. will go live today, so we will give it. Uh, we will put our part two tomorrow. So please subscribe to our channel, like, share, and subscribe to our videos. And even you know, go down in go down in the description. You will find our Instagram links, our blogs link. Please, uh, if you can, you know, just uh, follow us on Instagram. Uh, that will be a huge thing because we also post uh, post some stuff, stuff on Instagram. We post, you know, some something, you know, some here and there quotes and all. Yeah, exclusive stuff on exclusive Instagram. Stuff we, on Instagram. We don't so talk again. about uh, those stuffs on YouTube as well. So exclusive stuff on Instagram. So make sure you follow us on Instagram and uh, also ask questions. If you have any questions, you can leave them down in the comment section or uh, or like he said, we have our Instagrams linked, mm-hmm. so you can ask us questions there as well. So yeah, that's it for much today. Peace out.